Galarian Slowbro has an insane strategy that it can exploit and be super annoying to play against. Its ability Quick Draw gives it a 30% chance to move first with attacking moves. We throw in the Quick Claw item which gives the user a 20% chance to move first, and since these odds stack, Galarian Slowbro has a 50% coin flip chance to be fast bro. Alright look, the jury is out. Galarian Slowbro has absolutely beat the mid allegations and I am finally here to use this thing today. And I'm honestly really excited because you can really get up to some good nonsense with this thing. Listen, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k and the support would be greatly appreciated. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Quackleval as I decide to toss out the Cleaver. Now, this is actually a Choice Scarf lead Cleaver. It's here to essentially go for that Stone Axe, set up the Stealth Rock. Uh, but being Choice Scarf, I know that I can actually outspeed this thing. And what I do not want to do is take a Water Attack from this thing. So I'm going to instead go for the U-Turn. What is a bit unfortunate about going for the first turn U-Turn there is... And essentially now they know that the Cleaver is going to be running that Choice Scarf. But this is going to allow me to get in the Galarian Slowbro. I know I can take an attack or two from this thing. And plus, I keep that thing on me. I have a literal Shell Gun. There's truly not a more gangsta Pokemon than Galarian Slowbro. We are absolutely strapped as hell out here, and at this point I'm just going to go for the Psychic. I can uh, have a good chance to activate either Quick Claw or Quick Draw, and I can end up knocking this thing out. However, they're going to go for the Terra. They go for the Terra Water, that's going to give them a nice little boost in their Water Stab, seeing as the Aqua Step did a decent about amount of damage last time. They're going to try to grab a kill here, but let me tell you something. The boy Paul does not go down like that. We are able to live the Aqua Step, hits us with his weird little duck toes, and we are able to barely live it with 13, which allows us to then fire off a nice little Psychic. Comes from the Gat, and is not going to quite be able to knock this thing out. But at this point, I don't really have a switch, so I'm just going to stay in, and <laughs> Quick Draw does activate, allows me to go first, and I can finish them off with a Shell Sidearm. So, that is actually hilarious. Sometimes, you just got to roll the dice with the dude, and it does pay off here. So... That's actually super important because they did actually commit their Terra. We don't have to worry about that for the rest of the match. And we are absolutely out here gunning hose down. So they're now going to switch into Fat Dragon. Now Salamence is a very scary Pokemon for my team. I imagine this thing does want to set up as I just stay and go for that Shell Sidearm. I basically roll the dice here for that 50% chance to go first. It does not quite hit this time. Uh, it does allow them to get up a nice little plus one attack and speed. However, this thing takes a shell 9mm to the face and it does over half. So you already know we're about to roll that dice. Quick Draw does activate. And Fast Bro is able to finish off the Salamence, which is honestly <laughs> amazing. They've already they've seen what this thing can do. And the fact that you Dragon Dance in the face of my little pink fella here, you're going to have a bad time. So... Now comes in the Sinistra. This is a Pokemon that is relatively defensive, but I'm just going to stay in here and just keep on firing shots. Literally, why not? I go for that Shell Sidearm, and guess what? This time, the Quick Claw activates and allows me to go first, and they just straight up turn off their game. My dude absolutely did not want that smoke, and he is now outside touching grass. So, Galarian Slowbro is doing it to him. Luckily, though, we do have another match here for you. So in this game, we've got a really interesting matchup. They have some definitely scary mons like the Clefable with the chance to set up. They have the Haxorus for Dragon Dance stuff. Things like the Empoleon do really well against my team. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So this dude is going to go ahead and lead off with the Frostlass, which tells me essentially it's going to be kind of a hazard setter with the spikes. And I decide to go with the old Easy Bake Oven, an absolute classic. And at this point, I'm figuring I should probably just get some damage off on this thing. It's likely going to be Focus Sash. Uh, I'm going to go for an Overheat, which covers for potential switches if they don't want to kind of sacrifice the Frostlass against the Fire-type on the turn 1 here. I do just go for that Overheat as they set up a nice little layer of Legos on my side, as the Overheat is going to knock this thing to Sash. So, the bad news is that my team does not have a great matchup against the Frostlass, and looking at the rest of their team, I'm weighing my options on kind of what Rotom's role is going to be here. I end up going for the Volt Switch, as they actually just Destiny Bond, so... That is actually unfortunate. Rotom would have been really good to keep around with uh, some Will-O-Wisp uh, kind of support for their physical attackers. However, yeah, the Destiny Bond definitely catches me there, and at least we are able to take care of the Frostlass. Now, here's why I'm not super mad at trading the Rotom for Frostlass, is because now we get an empty battlefield, and that's going to allow me to go into whatever I want, and I'm thinking, hey, this place is a fucking dump. I'm going to go into the mice, the little, the little mice family, literally Mousehold, one of the funniest Pokemon in this new generation, and... This thing comes in here and he has a pretty fun role. So, they call him the janitor. And that is because we come in, we get hurt by some spikes, and I say, this place is a dump. I'm going to go for the tidy up, bring out the old little mouse-sized brooms, and we sweep away those spikes. Now, 
they go into Mudsdale, and I figure this thing is probably here for Stealth Rock support anyway, and I feel like my mouse hold is in a pretty good spot. I get a nice little attack and speed boost while also clearing off the battlefield, as then they go for the Stealth Rock, which is honestly just rude. You see this little, I'm putting this baby to work, brushing off the battlefield, and then you put some more shit on it? You just hate to see it. But, uh, the reason why we like this matchup is because of this reason. I can just go for that Encore, which is going to force this thing to continue to set up Stealth Rock, and I can essentially now just sweep that away, be at plus two attack and speed. And while the Mudsdale has a good defensive matchup because of its stamina ability, every time you touch it, it does get a defense boost. But with it being stuck into that, uh, that Stealth Rock, it's not going to have a good time. So they decide to switch out of here. And I say, all right, I'm just going to do my little janitor duties. We tidy up once more, make sure this place is spotless and sparkling. And uh, now I'm at plus two attack and speed so this little mouse family while they may look friendly will absolutely chew your eyes out and essentially bomb you with their babies so that's exactly what we're gonna do even though they go into the steel type in the form of empoleon guess what vin diesel is all about family and family don't give a shit we go for that population bomb and with that wide lens we're guaranteed to hit and with 10 hits actually nine here we can end up knocking this thing out even through the resistance so that is amazing empoleon is a huge threat to my team out of the way and at plus two, you do not want to play with these mice. I, I swear to God. Um, <laughs> that thing goes down, um, and we still are faster, especially with that double tidy up than their entire team. However, back comes the Mudsdale. So again, every time you touch Mudsdale, it is going to get a defense boost. And I do not want to really get it to plus six to power up its body presses. So what I'm going to do instead is just go into the Tropius. I, I figure sometimes you got you to gotta get in and get out. The, the mouse did what they needed to do. And now I can go into the Tropius, who takes a body press easily. So, at this point, this is a Tropius that is built to be kind of around a speedy harvest set. So, what I'm going to do is go for a substitute, kind of scout what the Mudsdale wants to go for here. And bring myself closer to where I can actually activate a Salic Berry. So, what this thing does is, with its harvest ability, it can continually regenerate its berry and be super fast. And then you pair that with Swords Dance. And you've got a, uh, a little banana neck fella that can actually do some serious damage. So I do go for the Swords Dance here. Of course, against a Mudsdale, I'm going to need all the offensive help that I can get. Um, but they set back up the Stealth Rock there as now they can just finish uh, the, the Substitute off at least with that Heavy Slam. So I know that I'm honestly feeling pretty, pretty much bulky enough to be able to take an attack from this thing and get knocked to uh, that Salic range. But I don't really want to risk it at this point. I just go for that Leaf Blade trying to get some chip on this thing because... It's a huge problem to the team, but I actually end up landing a critical hit, and that is why we love the high critical hit ratios, especially against uh, defensive walls like that. So, Tropius is out here taking names. We are here to do two things, give people potassium with our bananas, and give them death. So, in comes the Honchcrow, and I figure Honchcrow might try to pull some Sucker Punch, weird sh I don't know what this thing wants to go for. Uh, so, I actually end up going for the Substitute, where luckily they do set up a Tailwind, which is honestly fine. What is not fine is this substitute actually does not bring me to my berry range. And I really just want this Tropius to eat something. He's, he's feeling hungry out here. So knowing that this thing is going to be faster, especially with that tailwind up, I'm just going to go for another substitute here, knowing they have to kind of uh, break my sub as they do it with the heat wave here. So that does, of course, break the substitute. But I say, hey, I'm actually going to just put one right back here. Hold on. I'm just going to just going to set this right here. We hide behind the old bean bag, and that is going to give us our Salic Berry. So at plus one speed, unfortunately we are not faster than the Honchkrow behind the Tailwind. So this is why relying on Harvest is actually kind of fun because every turn you basically have a chance to regenerate that berry. So we kind of have to just sit here and chill and wait for it to happen as they try to break the substitute again with the Heat Wave and unfortunately it does in fact miss. That allows me to fire off a nice little Leaf Blade in return and that does some big boy damage with another critical hit. Honestly the luck has been kind of insane on my side at this point. So uh, they go for a Brave Bird here. They figure they're not fucking around with any more misses. That does, of course, break the substitute. And my Harvest is truly not doing its job. I don't know what this Tropius is doing over here slacking, but it's not uh, it's not harvesting that Salic Berry. But luckily, we've wasted enough time to where that Tailwind is going to be petering out here pretty soon. And we should be still a pretty, pretty quick little banana dinosaur, as the Tailwind actually does go away on this turn. And still, Harvest is just not harvesting out here. It's... Unfortunate. However, they're going to go into the Haxorus, and Haxorus is extremely scary, of course. Whenever there's that potential sweeper threat, um, I just would like to get some chip damage off on this thing. I don't really want to commit my Terra Water here. As I make the right decision, they actually end up having the first impression. So, it doesn't matter how fast my Tropius was, I am going to go down there. So, unfortunately, Tropius gets cut short. However, 
Now it's time to bring in the goat. You already know what Paul is made of, and we're about to shoot up some fools. So, we bring in this thing as... I know I can likely take an attack from this thing. If it is going to have the Earthquake, I'm going to go for the Terra Fairy here. That's going to cover for them potentially going for a Dragon Stab move. Or if they do have the Earthquake coverage, I'm going to guarantee uh, that the Slowbro can live that. So, we put the old heart on our head. Could not be more adorable. And there's, of course, always the chance to just be faster with the Slowbro, which is, I think, the funniest gimmick ever. So, uh, they actually end up going for the Swords Dance here, and that is quite frightening, but Slowbro is positioned extremely well in this match, considering the last Pokemon is just going to be that Clefable. So, uh, I go for the Shell Sidearm, it does a huge amount of damage, and we even get the Unnecessary Poison just to just to salt the wound a little bit. I'm getting extremely lucky today, um, but, you know, when you're, when you're rolling the dice, sometimes it's going to pay off. So, <laughs> I just go for another Shell Sidearm, as Quick Draw does activate to allow me to go first, however, they actually just end up switching out, and they go into the Clefable, who is not the kind of guy you want to see coming in on, you know, a stab shell sidearm. So I blast this dude right to the face, and that does take care of it. My guess is they probably do not have the coverage on the Haxorus. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we love the Terra Fairy on the old Slow Boy. So Haxorus comes back in. It can choose to go for the first impression, but of course we resist that. And uh, a shell sidearm with the quick, the quick draw, just to just to give you one last taste, is gonna go first and finish off the Haxorus. So that's gonna be the end of the match. Um, definitely a lot of RNG on my side, but regardless, still some super fun games, and honestly having a lot of fun with this team. So let me know what you guys think about the uh, the Galarian Slowbro. This thing is absolutely the truth, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun. So thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Peace out.